Welcome to Dot Social, the first podcast about the world of decentralized social media, also known as the Fediverse. Each episode, host Mike McHugh talks to a leader in this movement, someone who sees the Fediverse's tremendous potential and understands that this could be the internet's next wave. Today, Mike's talking to John Battelle. John has so many accomplishments, but he's perhaps best known as a co-founder of Wired Magazine. He's also an entrepreneur who's founded Web 2.0 conferences, Federated Media Publishing, The Industry Standard, and The Recount. He's an author who's written about Google and is now working on a book about the internet we deserve, not the internet that we have. We hope you enjoy this conversation. All right, John Battelle, welcome to the podcast. Man, it's so good to be here, Mike. Yeah, it's great to have you, man. Um, it's uh, We go back a long ways, and uh, we've seen a lot. Uh, you've seen a lot. Um, and uh, so people. have you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, from different vantage points, uh, and uh, it's going to be really exciting to talk to you about, you know, how you're seeing the future shaping for the Internet and the web. But I yeah. thought maybe a great place to start would be way back when you started um, as a founder of Wired and uh, in the early days of digital media when there was no banner advertising, there was, you know, you were just putting things from print onto, onto digital. Um, could you tell us a little bit about those, those days, those early days? Yeah, it's funny that you brought up the banner advertising stuff because... Um, uh, at Wired, we have a, a, a pretty fundamental uh, intersection with history uh, as it relates to how kind of the whole shit show of the internet <laughs> evolved. <laughs> um, I, I actually call it the original sin. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, we founded Wired uh, in 92. We launched the first I uh, issue of the magazine in, in January 93. Um, and, you know, just at the last minute before we were going to publication, I, I, for the first four years of Wired, I wrote a column that ran through the front of the book. I wrote this column that was just sort of, you know, random items of interest that didn't make it into the magazine. Right. Um, I think the column was called flux F L U X. Anyway, just at the last minute, I got an item in from, uh, a fellow that we were working with who was writing for us, uh, out of London. Um, and he was kind of covering Europe, you know, for us. Um, and he, he said, you know, there's this interesting thing coming out, um, of, uh, CERN, uh, this guy, uh, Tim Berners-Lee is doing this thing called the World Wide web. Um, you might want to check it out. <laughs> so, you know, I, uh, I was on a bunch of forums and stuff and, you know, Usenet and, you know, I was pretty into the online world pre web. Um, so I, I did my best to figure out what was going on. I wasn't totally sure, but I put an item uh, in the January magazine about it, which no one read because the column was tiny and sort of, you know, designed in the way wired. Was it went across yeah, very hard to read, right? Yeah. Um, but it allowed us to claim that we didn't miss the internet, um, <laughs> uh, you know, when we launched as a paper magazine, right? And that the World Wide Web, we didn't miss that. So, uh, and then, of course, from that point forward, for five years while I was still, uh, you know, at the magazine, we covered it really, really closely. About a year uh, after we did the first issue of the magazine, we were planning the launch of Hot Wired, which was our version of Wired Magazine on the web, you know, at scale publishing endeavors, commercial publishing endeavors. Um, and we were hiring a ton of uh, young journalists to cover uh, all sorts of things, you know, business, culture, you know, technology, blah, blah, blah. But actually, we uh, didn't want to just do a digital version of Wired, right? We wanted to reinvent everything for the medium, right? That was uh, Lewis, our, uh, you know, founder and, and, and editor in chief. He's like, we can't just shovel, you know, our Wired stories onto the web. So we had to reinvent everything. So <clears throat> uh, I, I was, you know, in this meeting where we were talking about our plans to launch Hotwired, and it was just four or five of us. And 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 I sort of like raised my hand and asked the obvious question, which is, how are we going to pay for this? Uh -huh. You know, <laughs> like right. you know, like how are we going to 
you know, and, and so that got, you know, Kevin Kelly and, and myself and John Plunkett, uh, who was the design director, uh, uh, and Lewis, we, we had this sort of, hmm, you know, head scratching moment. It's like, well, for the magazine, of course, we have subscriptions, um, and, uh, we have advertising, but we certainly can't charge for anything on the internet because people are already very grumpy about the fact that, um, they have to pay for their, you know, ISP. Right. And, oh, and right. it's kind of a, like, I'm already paying once for the internet. Don't make me pay again. Right. right, right. So, <laughs> you know, and Stuart brand and, 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 and many others were our advisors and Stuart brands famous out of context quote is information wants to be free. Right. Um, so we're like, we, we don't want to charge. And I'm like, well, that leaves advertising. And, and Lewis is like, but what do the ads look like? Cause there was no display advertising. Right. right. Um, and, and, and I'm like, well, you know, I'm on prodigy. It's like one of the only places, this old online service called prodigy is a dial up online service takes over your whole screen. Right. And controls everything. And, and, and at the bottom of the, uh, prodigy, uh, you know, screen was this banner, uh, advertisement, which usually I think was owned by Sears. It was usually either for Sears or for like, I think they had a joint venture with like some consulting firm, you know? Um, and so I'm like, well, maybe we could use that. We could do like a banner like that, except we would render it, you know, in HTML on, on a web browser. And, and Lewis sort of gets this, you know, spark in his eye. He's like, I know what we'll do. We'll, we'll put the banner up at the top. So when people are on our site, they can scroll it out of the way, (laughs) which, which is like, you know, that's the first time people ever said banner ads are worth nothing. Right. Um, and, and I said, well, that sounds great, Lewis, let's do that. And so then, you know, he talked to the engineers over at Hotwired, Right. And I said, and then we had another meeting or something. And, and, and I said, Lewis, there's one thing that's been bothering me about this whole idea of the banner ads. And this is when I get to the original sin. Um, uh, I said, you know, I, I was a fresh graduate from the graduate school of journalism at UC Berkeley. And I, you know, I had very highfalutin ideas about separation of church and state. Right. And I said, I don't want the content from advertising in the same content management system as the content for editorial. Um, I, I think that would be bad. I think it'd be better to have a separate kind of whole system for the ads that might be helpful to, you know, in any case, because we were in, we were literally making all this shit up. Right. Yeah. Um, and he's like, yeah, you're totally right. We don't want to do that. So he talks to the engineers and they build the first ad server that served only ads. Right. Yeah. And and separated advertising from editorial, which created this entire industry. Right. That yeah. separated advertising from the context of the individuals that were consuming our content and open the door for the identity problems that have plagued the internet ever since open the door for the fraud problems that have plagued the internet ever since. Um, and, and, you know, had we just said, no, we want to connect the two and keep them connected and, and sort of build that into the protocol of how advertising works going forward. I think it's possible we might have been able to, you know, save ourselves an awful lot of. <laughs> but it turns out that the ad server that they built at Hotwired uh, and a lot of the other technology became Apache, which yeah. is like, you know, the, the under right. So, so it essentially was the very first ad uh, ever commercial ad on the internet. Then came out uh, a little bit later. It was AT and T. Uh, it, it was a banner at the top of Hotwired, and it got like a seventy percent click through. Because everyone's like, what the hell is this? Right. right? <laughs> and, and, and of course, the, the, you may recall, I'm sure you do, Mike, the, the actual content. I mean, I think we were at Netscape at the time, right? I was, yeah. um, and and the, the actual content was, have you ever clicked here? You will. That's right. <laughs> that's right, John. That and, is exactly right. Now that you mention it, that's, I remember that vividly. Yes. Yes. And, and, and the truth is everyone did. And that's the last time. <laughs> <laughs> it was the highest performing banner ad of all time. Yeah, of all time. Of yes. all time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and then they just like every year it fell by an order of magnitude until it went down to 0. 0.007, which is, I think, where it is now from yeah. 70%. So, yeah, that's incredible. What, a, what an yeah. a awesome 
story and you know to to, yeah. to think back on that time when you know the internet was so new a lot of people had no idea or didn't even believe that it was really going to be amount to anything you know right. um AOL prodigy i mean AOL really pretty much dominated the entire AOL audience. was yeah AOL was it it really yeah. was i mean AOL yeah. was yeah the the sort of the equivalent AOL did for online what you know, the Macintosh did for personal computers, right? It just yeah. brought everything together, made it much easier uh, and had a, a, you know, a marketing genius running it. Yeah. Um, right. Just like Apple, you know, with Steve Jobs and, and yeah. Steve Case did a lot to yeah. literally get America online. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. But then they realized that they had to connect to the Internet and that was the beginning of the end for them. Yeah. It's so interesting. You know, you look back with 2020 hindsight on those days and like the what ifs start to emerge, you know, what if we had built identity in from the beginning, right? Another what if that I, I ask myself is what if we had, if the web wasn't just links to between web pages, but was also links to people, people yes. were fundamentally part of the web. Right. Um, what if, right. Um, had we done that then, um, and that is those kinds of fundamental problems, um, I do think, or, or, or the fact that those didn't exist have led to everything we've seen today, both the good and the bad. Um, yeah. Yeah. And a lot, of, a lot of bad, a lot of problematic, you know, things. Um, yeah. And so when you look back, you know, now, and you, you've seen, of course, you've had a ringside seat through the entire evolution of the industry, right, as you've went on to build other companies, you know, running the web conf the web summit conference, the, the, you know, building, you know, and working with other entrepreneurs and creators and digital, digital media, you know, founders and so on. When you look at how all of this has progressed and you look at where we're at now, yeah. you know, do you still feel hopeful that there is opportunity to, to make the internet work? better the way you know we learned the right lessons and do you feel like the technology could happen such that we could make the internet be um fundamentally better yeah i mean i my short answer is yes um the longer answer and a, a parallel kind of comes to mind um the political system of the united states <laughs> right um you know, if you were to ask almost anybody right now who's engaged in the political system in the United States in the last startup that I that I just exited covered national politics for digital media, for social media, actually. Recount. <laughs> Super fun. Yes. Um, but, uh, you know, the political system of the United States, if you say, you know, it's this experiment that we started, you know, 200 and, you know, 25 years ago or whenever it was, um, you know, are you optimistic about it? <laughs> It's like, well, you know, um, it's the worst we've got except for everything else. Right. right, right. Um, and, and, and so, yeah, I'm optimistic about it, but man, what a mess. Right. Yeah. Um, however, we are at this moment. Uh, and I think the last time you and I spoke, you know, we agreed it's kind of this long moment, the sort of, I don't know, three to five years. Mm -hmm. We might be in the middle of it. We might be in the first year of it, but we're in this moment where it seems like, uh, we're inflecting. Um, I, I say that the internet grew up and got a brain, right? right. And uh, it, it, right now it's in the process of sort of figuring out the internet itself, what it means to be able to have a conversation with human beings. Uh -huh. so, you know, with technology can talk to human beings in uh -huh. a way that makes value for uh, not only human beings, but the technology itself. It's, it starts at this recursive learning, uh, you know, uh, loop uh, with this ongoing, uh, it's kind of like what Google did with text queries. You can start to imagine at scale, people talking to the internet and the internet just getting super smart. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, and everyone says that's generative AI. And I, I think that that's probably what's going to stick is gen AI, just kind of like blogs stuck and other terrible words. But in, in any case, AI, we're at this moment where it seems like there's an incredible amount of opportunity, uh, innovation, potential for innovation. And, um, it, it's super exciting. So I get very optimistic when I think about the world as it could be given 
these new tools that are being built and this ecosystem that's starting to come together around that. But we have to get over the extraordinary inertia of the system we've built over the last 30 years, right. which is this unholy amalgam of steroidal capitalism <laughs> um, and essentially oligarchic companies that have created a governance system based on their terms of service and, and user license, licensing agreements, which essentially ensure that the world that I can imagine happening because of the inflection we're in mm -hmm. won't happen <laughs> right. if we stick to the way things are currently being run. Right. right. And, and so we've got to get over that. Right. And, 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 you know, for example, AI agents working on any of our behalfs, anyone listening to this, you or me, um, any, there's no good word for end user, but, you know, any consumer, yeah. that's a terrible word too. Right. person, right. citizen, human right. who is, you know, wants to automate their health claim insurance filing and appeals process. Right. So right. any of us who've dealt with this know that it's like a black hole of wasted time. Right. right. But imagine a little AI agent that some entrepreneur dreamt up that, you know, scans all of your email, all of your, anything that you want to scan in, any picture you might take of a paper form you get, right? All of the policies of any health provider in the chain of trying to deal with all this bullshit, the insurance companies, the, 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 the hospital you might have gone to, your doctors, whatever, and figures out how to navigate all that shit for you, right? Right. I can imagine an entrepreneur building such a agent and I know the technology exists for at least V1 of that and then to get better and better. Right. Uh -huh. But in order for this to work, that agent needs permission to act as your agent and go snarf all that data down from Google's Gmail or Microsoft Outlook right. and from the Columbia healthcare system and from, and right. from, and from. Right. And these established large organizations with this sclerotic approach to the world will be like, no, 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 no. We can't, we can't let you have access to your own data because that's right. automated scraping and that's bad and it's malicious. Right. right? And right. they'll say it's because it's, potential vector for fraud and they'll say it's because it's you know right. potential vector for malicious That's actors right. but it's actually because they're terrified of the future right and they don't want to let go of the business model that's making them profit right now right uh and and that's what we have to get over that's the yeah. block um mm -hmm. so uh you know and that's actually the work that I'm now doing isn't to make those companies per se. I'm encouraging them being made by investing in, 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 in entrepreneurs who are doing that. But I'm also really now focusing almost all my work on writing about this and um, trying to sort of, to the best I can, lay out a vision for how this could be, lay out an understanding of how we got to where we are so that we can get over this, you know, blockage that we have in our way to what I think could be to try to put a bow on a very long answer to your very short question, uh, an optimistic future for the internet. Yeah. Yeah. You have a great blog post uh, on your search blog uh, about, uh, you know, um, the sites that never get built, you know, <laughs> right. why, why it's really hard now to build, you know, an experiment on the internet and what are some of the things we could be doing to change that? Um, yeah. and for the better. And, you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm particularly interested in hearing your thoughts on is how you see social media as part of that, you know, um, for people who are, um, uh, uh, wanting to experiment with new approaches to social media that can be better, that can be, to, you know, that can be built on, you know, some good solid first principles, um, one of the things that I think is really powerful about Federation and Activity Pub and the social web is that someone can build a new service um, that maybe it's an amazing video editing system and filtering system, right? But they don't have to also build a whole social network to right. get that to even work. They don't have right. to build an incredibly new right. sort of monetization thing, tying that with advertising. They can focus on that piece, right? Yes. And, 
and the audience who is on the web can just use it. And they don't have people who can join. They don't have to refollow people and build a whole new profile. They can just, exactly. right. And yeah. that's, that's an example of the kind of thing that I think as we start to get these kinds of standards to happen on the internet, um, we could enable that kind of individualistic experimentation again. Yeah, it, it, exactly. I mean, Mike, what I think you're getting at is, and, and what this reminds me of, I, I've been rereading some uh, some books from kind of the from the mid aughts, like Jonathan Zittrain's uh, "The Future of the Internet and How to Avoid It," um, <laughs> and uh, and you know, a lot of people either forget or simply didn't, you know, weren't alive. Back in the days, the heady days of of the PC industry, um, when the, the 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 personal computer was a generative machine, right? right. It, you know, you could make a photo filter app and and sell right. it for fourteen bucks, right? right? And 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 in the early internet was a generative machine. You could make a website that that you could upload fo right. photos to, and then it would do filters on it, right? Right. Um, you didn't need to make a big platform like Snap or um, right. Instagram that after it scaled to 200 million people, right. then they started making photo filters and photo, you know, and all that cool stuff. But of course it was all locked into just that one social network. Right. Um, and so my point of the blog post that I, that I wrote was that, you know, it wouldn't it be better. And I think what you're basically in violent agreeing with me, if people could just make the cool thing and not yeah. have to worry about all the other, like the, the, the all the massive distribution problems uh, that you have in social networks today. So the, it starts with federation. You know, you'll probably remember that I started a company in 2004 called federated media. Yeah. And it was what I called at the time, not a social media company. It was what I called a conversational media company. Um, cause the idea was to encourage and engage conversations between people. Um, and it was about blogs at the time and what killed it, you know, eight years later was, uh, social media. <laughs> it was essentially the newsfeed, the Facebook newsfeed right. just kill, killed it, killed blogs. And, 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 and my company is, oh, I mean, I sold it, but mm -hmm. wasn't a great outcome for anybody. Um, so I think the Federation thing is really, really important because it will allow innovation to occur where it should occur at the edge, as opposed to, uh, you know, in a centralized, uh, you know, at scale, um, uh, platform. Right. right. Um, and, and I, I wrote a post in 2012, I think it was, um, I'll have to look it up, um, where I argued that, um, Facebook at the time, which was the bugaboo, my been my bugaboo for 10 years now. Um, uh, I said, you know, Facebook, if you just allowed everybody to carry their network with them wherever they went, you'd have to compete above the level of lock in on right. a social network and instead on the level of what you did with that social network to add value. Yeah. And if you unleashed that, but first of all, you'd be a much cooler place to work. Secondly, like you have a lot of at scale advantages to figure out what the next cool things would be, you know, and thirdly, people would want to work with you and you probably get a bunch of, you know, new revenue from a developer line, kind of the way Microsoft made a bunch of revenue from developers and still does. And all the cloud platforms now do, you know, I mean, it's yeah, why it's Salesforce worse. and Snowflake and everyone else, you know, is building and has built these at scale platform businesses that are generative in nature. Right. Um, we need an at scale generative consumer platform. Right. And it used to be the internet. Right. <laughs> and, 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 and it could again be the internet. And that's yeah. what I'm hoping we'll get to. Yeah. I think the, the, the point you're making around the sort of decentralization of innovation, right? That's, that's what the internet is all about. It's about right. decentralizing everything to the edge and decentralizing the innovation is such a powerful idea. And, you know, I think Facebook, um, you know, now with or Meta, now with threads, um, they are saying that they're going to let you take your network with you. Um, right. They haven't actually done it yet, but I haven't done it yet. <laughs> But what's your take on all of that? Have you been on Threads? Are you looking yeah. at what's going on there? What's your take? I, I have. It's funny. I've been on Threads since the beginning. Um, uh, and 
I've watched it, you know, develop. Um, and I've watched it in month by month, what, four months now, mm -hmm. um, become, you know, Twitter, uh, six or seven years ago, like right. maybe eight or eight or nine years right. ago. Like it hasn't, it hasn't quite gotten to the point where, you know, once you have a certain number of followers, you can tweet at some company's handle and they'll pay attention to you. That, I mean, I'll never forget the first time I got Comcast service call because I tweeted at Comcast, right? Wow. Yeah. Um, the, it's not there yet. Um, but what's happened in the last couple of weeks, uh, and, and, and most importantly, you know, with the awful, you know, terrorist, uh, shit and response that's going yeah. on in, in Israel and on the Gaza in, in Gaza yeah. um, is it's become more of a of a news platform mm -hmm. um, at least for me because I, I guess I follow you know a lot of people in the journalism uh, world um, I don't miss Twitter at all I left Twitter a year ago as soon as yeah. Elon Musk bought it I left yeah uh, I left my account open and I just paid I just said you know, yeah. join me on Mastodon is actually where, the same. <laughs> where, where I went. Um, but I have been watching threads and I'm very hopeful that they're going to do what you've done, um, what WordPress is doing. Um, and, you know, some other organizations are doing, which is commit to federation. They've mm -hmm. said they will. Um, it's not in their interest to do that uh, in, in, in the sort of, you know, myopic short term version right. of what Meta's you know, interests are, but in the long-term interests of what we've been discussing, I think it's very much in their interest. Um, yeah. And it would be extremely uh, beneficial to the rest of the internet if, you know, 100, 200 million people all of a sudden started to understand what it meant yeah. to be, uh, you know, social network independent <laughs> um, exactly. and to have those options as an entrepreneur to start to say, Hey, I'm going to do this cool thing. Bring your whole network, you know? Right. Um, so well, I yeah. imagine, I would imagine that uh, back before uh, when you where cell phones were a new thing, you know, and you bought a new cell phone, you got a new, you know, new, um, you switched to a different provider. You had to switch your phone number. Yeah. Had to there switch was your lock phone in number. there. Right. Um, and the myopic view would be keep that lock in because we don't want our business to be impacted. But the, the long term proper view, and this is, of course, what played out is you set it up so that there's number portability and now more people will come to your platform. People are going to be competing at, at higher levels about quality of service, et cetera. Right. Um, and I think the same absolutely could hold true for Facebook. Um, yeah. It would be. It would be uh, a massive uh, step forward for the social web yeah. uh, if, if if they follow through on their plans. Um, yeah. And it does it does seem like they're going to do it. Yeah, I mean, they're not walking back from it, but yeah. it, it clearly has not made the top five of their yeah. you know <laughs> of what they're trying to build. You know, their their current you know uh, you know punch list seems to not include doing that. Um, and the longer they wait, you know, I think that it's going to get the more complicated it probably is going to be in terms of the yeah. scale. Um, but, uh, hopefully they're sort of building the plumbing underneath to ensure that it's not that difficult to do. Um, yeah, but we'll see. But it, you know, the other thing about the evolution of the social web that, that you, uh, sort of pinged earlier, I want to just bring that up again, which, you know, I know you're very passionate about is this idea of, of, individual to individual um, because I think it was presumptive in the early uh, web that if you had a website, that was you. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that's a, an assumption I made that was wrong um, that, that I thought in 2001 to 2008 or so that kind of everyone would have a website. Right. And, you know, over time, as the tools got easier to use and, you know, as WordPress started to dominate, I thought, well, everybody's just going to have their site and then those sites right. will be able to connect to each other. And then more and more sophisticated stuff will start to be built that you can plug into that site that is right. essentially like your autonomous little module of identity right. that is managed through your site. Right. And, you know, of course, what happened, I should have realized, um, is a convenience one. Um, and you know, Facebook's like, no man, 
do you want your identity? Just come to this. We'll do all the hard shit. Just punch in a few, like your name, your right. birthday, you know, right. we'll do the rest. Right. right. Um, and, and, and I, I'm a little disappointed in myself for not realizing it. <laughs> like the harder way to go is usually not the way it goes at scale. Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, and so, um, you know, I think there's an opportunity with Federation uh, to get back to that, uh-huh. to 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 have a an identity independent of of a site, right? Even. Right, um, and, and that's exciting. And I and I do think that the AI piece has something to do with it. I also do think, um, and what are we like forty minutes in, and we haven't even mentioned this? So good for us. I think there is a role for the technologies. Uh, that underpin uh, crypto. Um, I, I'm not saying, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we should all have an economy where we sell each other's reputation. Um, that's already happened. Right. <laughs> it's not, it's not really working. Right. Um, but uh, I do think that there's, you know, trustlessness is an important concept. And mm-hmm. so um, uh, I think, you know, those kinds of pieces can start to get layered in, but uh, you know, it has to be easy. Yeah. Well, you, you're you're touching on something I think is really important here. The assuming that Threads federates, assuming that Activity Pub continues to advance and and the social web grows, now you have a different set of things that start to emerge as challenges. You know, identity, monetization, moderation, um, at scale, um, and so there's no shortage of things that will still have to be tackled. But those are also opportunities as well. And, you know, I think one of the things that I'd love to hear from you is like, you know, having started with the very first banner ad and looking forward to imagine a world where now we do have this federated social web. Um, How do you see what would be if you could paint the perfect picture, you wave a magic wand on how you would ideally like to see monetization work for a open social web? What would you do? Move the banner to the bottom. Yeah. It's, it's a hard one. <laughs> wow. Well, if every, if, 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 if you know, if, if we could remove an awful lot of friction, which we should not understate, but right. the purposes of this, of right. this back and forth, let's just understate right. it. Um, frictionless uh, attention and frictionless commerce um, attention being the standard for advertising and commerce being the standard for either subscription and or mm-hmm. um, value exchange, right? Right. Um, you could see waves of attention and waves of commerce going around as people discovered cool shit. Um, mm-hmm. And this is where I think some of the mechanisms, not necessarily the current, you know, blockchains, Mm-hmm. or even blockchain itself, but the mechanisms for aggregation of value mm-hmm. um, and insurance that the value exchange is um, appropriately uh, audited and auditable and managed um, could get really interesting, right? Um, I remember writing a blog post in like 2004 or five and uh, about how um, f- screwed up the news business is, right? So here I am, you know, I'm teaching a course on how screwed up the news business is at Northeastern next year. So like, it's, <laughs> it's only gotten worse, uh, in the last 20 years, but, um, and saying, you know, there's really only one way we can solve for the sort of disaggregation problem of news, which is, you know, Google and others have blown apart the publication. And now instead of reading the New York times and giving them $300 a year, mm-hmm. I read, 300 different sources every week. And right. I really don't remember which one they were, right? It's just like, I get pointed around and, you know, that's what we all have done and we still do in our social media feeds. But how does value accrue to the creator of that, you know, particular, this is obviously a problem you are really focused on at Flipboard. Um, well, you can have extremely high quality curatorial mechanisms and companies like Flipboard and you could have a system that was frictionless Uh that allowed for a small amount of value to accrue no matter where across the internet based on an understanding of a person's identity and their willingness to engage in a microtransaction. Right. And 
and, and back in 2004 or five, when I wrote this blog post, I said, the only place that could do this is Google. Because uh -huh. at that time, it right. was the central switching exactly. board of the right. entire internet, right? right. Um, and while it's kind of still is as it relates to search, it absolutely is not as it relates to attention around the internet anymore. There's too many of them. Uh -huh. So it would have to start from the edge and go back to the middle, uh -huh. which is why I think it's so important that we create a kind of independent uh, identity that is owned and operated by each of us uh -huh. because we want to, and it's not a lot of work to do. Right. Um, and if we can do that, the rest kind of follows, you know, yeah. there'll be a yeah. lot of entrepreneurs trying to make, you know, systems that collect uh, value and attention and distribute it, right. but they won't do it if the current roadblocks exist. Right. 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 But w when you look past that, you know, block, to that vista of where it could be and what it might be like, right. you could see an amazing amount of innovation. And would there be an amazing amount of fraud and bullshit? Yes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's the eternal problem mm -hmm. and opportunity of open versus closed. Yeah. You know, and you just got to take it because yeah. the world out there is like, you got roads. I'm looking at a road right now at my window and you could walk down it and get somewhere and you could also get hit by a car. So mm -hmm. like, yeah. Sorry, man. That's life. Right. <laughs> just right. like make sure you walk on the side and look for the cars. Right. You know, you know this is it's just I'd rather have an open system than be like, no, sorry, you have to wait for, you know, the the automated Uber to come yeah. and pick you up. Right. Fuck yeah. that. Like, I don't want to live in that world. I don't want to live in that world. Yeah. Uh, we do kind of already live in that world in a yeah. certain number of ways. Like you only get what Netflix wants you to see. You only see right. what Facebook and Meta want you to see. Mm -hmm. Like that world is terrifying to me. Yeah. And, and not just because, oh, they know everything about you. I couldn't care less what they know about me, to be honest. And most people don't. Mm -hmm. I care about the kind of world you're living in where it's closed, it's not open. And, you know, it's kind of, post-apocalyptic sci-fi you know yeah. <laughs> it's like you yeah. it's not a world i want to live in where yeah. where choice has been taken away and 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 you know and and you're essentially an object that is being leased or rented right uh, and, right. and I'm, i just ugh. yeah so uh I, i'm all for you know the stuff we've been talking about i think i think there is a renaissance of interesting people who want to work and think and create in this space. Um, and it feels to me more hopeful than mm -hmm. it has certainly for the past 15 years. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting how this is a moment where basic first principles and common sense really matter to determine where we're gonna go from here. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I, one, an example of that is when you just think about, you have a person who's going to tell a story and you have people who are interested in that person's story, and they're happily willing to pay. Uh, they're happily willing to to you know to to fund that. Um, but the massive indirection and lack of a direct relationship between an audience member and a you know a storyteller or a brand for that matter has created all of these middlemen. Has created all of this sort of um, surveillance economy because. Yeah. Everything happens through these indirect players, and there's no, there hasn't been a way to just directly connect with between a storyteller and an audience member, or a a brand and right. a, a buyer of that product of for that brand. Yeah, and that, that that's the thing that I think is if we can and, figure that out. And 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 by the way, build that into the equivalent of the sort of internet protocol as opposed to monetize it as a corporation. Right. Um, now, could corporations be first and fastest at taking advantage of that protocol? hundred mm percent, -hmm. go for it, mm -hmm. but make it an open protocol. Um, yeah. and, and, and I believed that, you know, back in the early two thousands that blogs were going to be that thing. And, and I was wrong as we've discussed. Um, because you wanted to follow someone, just take their RSS, right? right. And, then, and, then, and then over time, that's gonna, that RSS is going to build out to something yeah. that ha includes like, but, but now we need to, you know, you're absolutely right. Like right now, if I want to follow somebody, I've got to, you know, maybe I, maybe I see them on Flipboard. Maybe I see them on Substack. Maybe I right. follow them on seven different social networks. Right. So it's, it's a hot, holy mess. It is. Um, and, and it's not, um, 
it's not sustainable, certainly yeah. from the point of view of people who are creative. Um, and, and so, you know, let's go build that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, and yeah. you know, your point about RSS, I think is a great one. The RSS was just a one way connection between a piece of client software, not a person and a website, right? right. Activity pub in a lot of ways is like, you can almost think of it as like an evolution of RSS. It's two way. Right. And it's a connection between the person and the person publishing, right? right. The entity publishing. That is a very big deal. And yes. that's the thing that I, that has gotten me so excited. Um, how you then translate that into a user experience that makes sense and is simple and to understand and how you monetize and fund all that. There's a whole host of questions, but yeah. we've never had that technology before. Um, yeah. It's never happened at scale, right? It was right. built, you know, uh, Evan Prodromo, who, who I've had on, on the podcast and others helped create activity pub back in 2016, but, you know, now with Mastodon, you know, ironically enough that, that, you know, what's happened with Elon and Twitter has yeah. basically created a, an opportunity where this technology is now being seriously considered and looked at. Uh, yeah. so I'm I think it's a big opportunity. And then there's other pieces of it that, that, uh, that, you know, are worth paying attention to. We just saw this week, uh, two, uh, uh, warnings fired over the bow of two very large platform companies, um, Twitter and Facebook from the EU, yeah. um, based on new legislation that just went into effect this year, um, the Digital Markets Act and the Digital Services Act. Mm -hmm. um, these are very important pieces of legislation because they create new market realities that allow for different kind of navigation of business models. Yeah. Um, now, yes, only in the EU. However, it's a lot of people there, number one, very, very big economy, number two. And number three, once people get used to the new things they can do uh, in the EU, there will be all manner of pressure, subtle and not so subtle, to bring those capabilities to the United States and other markets. So um, I'm paying attention to that as well. Are you writing about this? This, this is a very confusing world yeah. right and obviously it is. Regulation I, I wrote a, I wrote a piece bad. about exactly what I you know the EU's uh, yeah. legislation last week yeah. um, which uh, my wife is kind of my first audience right and so she's I said and she usually reads my piece and she's like oh I like that one or you know that was good but you know went too long or whatever this one she said I stopped reading after the first paragraph I can't read about legislation <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, I think I, yeah, when the next time I write about it and I will, I think I'll write about it in a different way, but I just felt like I had to break down the actual legislation before mm -hmm. I could get into the impact, but maybe I'll flip the bit and start with the impact. <laughs> yeah. yeah, It's a hard thing to write about, um, you yeah. know, but I think it's needed. I think, I think being able to sift through and, and evangelize regulatory changes that really could help and really could open things up versus yeah. ones that sound good or well-meaning, but actually make it harder for everybody and yeah. just make the incumbents stronger. Well, that's um, GDPR in a nutshell. Exactly. That's <laughs> GDPR, right? CCPA yeah. and so on. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, so um, what are you working on now? And and uh, how should people be following along with, you know, the, all the different things that you're doing these days? So um, I'm I'm working on... I guess you could say it's a book. <laughs> um, it might take multiple forms before it ends up as a book, but it's been 20 years since I've really in earnest worked on a book. Uh, and in between then I was just starting companies. Um, so uh, I'm back to, uh, to a book and, and the focus of the book is a lot of what we've been talking about. It, it's both a history of, of the commercial internet. So the past 30, 35 years, um, and an argument about what we should make next. Uh, the, I call it the internet we deserve, um, as that. opposed to the internet we have. Right. Um, and, uh, so it's a history and an argument. Um, and, uh, the process of doing that book or, you know, will kind of take me in lots of directions, a lot of reporting, a lot of just writing out loud, um, on my site. So if people want to follow what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, I'll be writing up my reporting probably 
a couple times a week um, on my site, which is batelmedia.com. Um, and uh, I'm also teaching at Northeastern, um, and I'm attached to a center there called the Burn Center that does a lot of work uh, on policy and the, uh, on internet uh, policy, where I taught at Columbia Policy at Columbia for f- the past four years. So it's an area that I find really important, if a bit dry. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I'm excited about that. That book could not come sooner. Yeah, uh, I and, totally and, agree. And, and I'm psyched that you're putting out blog posts along the way as you're having these realizations. Yeah. On the book. Well, the more people that come and read them and argue with me about them, the better everything will get. So yeah. I, I know it's old fashioned now to say, you know, read my blog. But, uh, you know, read my blog. <laughs> yeah. You know, now there's a WordPress plugin to publish it via Activity. I am, I am going to install that. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how that works. Uh, I mean, people can find me on Mastodon and also on Threads. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm no longer on the uh, dead bird site. Yeah. <laughs> Nor am I. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, I think, I think, it's really exciting to see someone with your experience and all of the things that you've done, starting with the observations around the original sin and all the way through monetization, content creation, um, user experience, uh, privacy, identity, all of these things. You know, you're one of the few people that can, I think, write credibly about all of this and where it should go and what the Internet should be that we deserve. So I'm, Thank you. I'm really excited to, to see where this goes. As am I. It'll be a good journey. Um, and uh, I'll look forward to uh, to seeing how you guys, you know, I know you've got a lot cooking. So yeah. uh, good luck with all of that. Yeah. Thank you, John. Well, it was great to have you here. Thank you again for joining the, the podcast and, and just terrific conversation. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening. You can follow John's work over at BattelleMedia.com. Big thanks to our editors, Rosanna Caban and Anne Lay. To learn more about what Flipboard's doing in the Fediverse, sign up via the link in this episode's description. You can also follow Mike McHugh on Mastodon at mike at flipboard.social. See you in the Fediverse.